I'd like to call the uh, Tuesday, April 10th, Committee of the Whole meeting to order. It's approximately 5.13 p.m. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Bailey. Present. Councilman Burgess. Here. Councilman Maldonado. Here. Councilman Roth. Here. Councilwoman Fierkloff. Here. Vice Mayor Shelley. Here. Mayor Porter. Here. Any additions, deletions, deferrals? Mr. Manager? No. None. Uh, moving on to uh, tab one. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Okay. Is there a second? second? All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Tab two, Mr. Manager. Here, the motor control center for engine 21 has reached the end of its useful life and needs to be replaced. The unit is currently out of service due to age and unsafe operation. The unit is used to control various pumps, motors, and other auxiliaries that help control the engine. Engine 21 is one of the largest units used to produce power for the city of Homestead. It is also one of the newer units and has many years of useful life remaining. Staff recommends mayor and council approve the attached resolution authorizing the purchase of a replacement motor control center for engine 21 at the Gordon W. Ivy power plant in accordance with U.S. Communities Contract Number EV2370. Questions from council? Any comments from the public? Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. Any final comments? All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Tab three, Mr. Manager. Mayor, staff recommends mayor and council approve the attached resolution authorizing the city manager to approve Garland DBS for repairs of roofs at the Homestead Sports Complex baseball field dugouts, William F. Dickinson Community Center, Harris Field Stadium locker rooms, YMCA building at Harris Field, FOP building at Harris Field, FICO Williams Community Center, and the City of Homestead Procurement Building. The repairs are needed due to damages received during Hurricane Irma. Garland DBS will provide all roofing supplies, related products, and services as required. Any questions from Council? Any comments from the public? Answer that, please. <laughs> Any final comments from, from uh, council? Is there a motion? Right. Moving and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Tab four. Mayor Aspira of Florida, Inc. is requesting the mayor and council authorize city managers to approve a waiver of usage fees for the total amount of $400 for the use of FICO Williams Community Center Banquet Hall on June 1st, 2018. It's a charitable organization that operates three charter schools across Miami-Dade County in the underserved communities of North Miami, Wynwood, and Aspira Leadership and College Preparatory Academy in Homestead. Any questions from council? The applicant is here, so I'll ask her to come up. I know everyone likes to sometimes hear from them. Ms. Bailey? I was just curious if you're charging for your graduation. Do you um, charge the parents? So far, I don't, have a, I don't have an estimate. I was just sent here to be a representative. I wanted to just listen and hear. So do parents pay for a ticket for graduation? That I know of, no. Okay. No. Thank you. Ms. Bearclaw? Thank you, Mayor. Um, has your address changed? Are you still in your leisure city, correct? Yes, yes, leisure city. What, where do your students live? Do um, they live, they in, live in um, the migrant camps, South Aid and Redland. Okay, so this is for kindergarten and ninth grade? Or it's going to be ninth? kindergarten graduation, it's going to be eighth grade graduation. Kindergarten and eighth, eighth grade. grade, correct. Okay, thank you. Good man. Mr. Maldonado? Yes, um, I, I'm sure many of you know in the past I used to work with Aspira, so I know it's a great organization. They started off as a um, before they were charter, what, was, what were they were? Um, I 
I forgot the name of it. Anyways, you know, the great organization doing a lot of good work within the community. Um, they work within our um, the South Bay Migrant Camp and uh, and the uh, Redland Migrant Camp. They work alongside it. We did a lot of prevention work with the schools, both in, in all the schools here, Homestead Middle, Homestead Senior, South Dade. Uh, I know that they're still doing that, even though they didn't have the charter school. So um, I it would be in full support. And if anything, if, if something that you guys don't want to sponsor, I'll go ahead and sponsor the whole thing. So Take great care. organization. Thank you. You're going to sponsor the whole thing? You jumped out first. <laughs> You're stuck now. <laughs> All right, so we're taking this off the agenda then. Or? Uh, we're about to jump in. That's fine, but not Okay. We're not going to waive it. Mr. Maldonado is going to take the lead. He's either going to give you all of it. Mr. Burgess is going to cover what Mr. Maldonado doesn't cover. Okay. So we don't need to waive the fees, but contact the council's offices. And so let's, we'll put together the resource to pay for the usage of the facility out of this board, okay? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Fair enough. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Maldonado. You're a good man. Yeah. Can't if we can just you too, Mr. Burgess. You too, Mr. Burgess. We'll just remove it. Okay, so tab four we'll is off. Remove it from the agenda. Tab five. Mayor, it's a staff's recommendation that City Council approve the attached resolution authorizing city managers to purchase two 2018 model year Dodge Charger patrol vehicles from AutoNation CDJR Pembroke Pines in accordance with the Florida Sheriff's bid number FSA 17 VEL 25.0 and with Dana Safety Supply Inc. providing and installing all the additional police equipment and graphics for this vehicle, for the vehicles in accordance with City of Miami contract number 5163821. Total project cost is $75,271.22, which will be funded from self-insurance. Questions from council? Ms. Fairclough? Yes, thank you, Mayor. I just have a quick question. This was probably answered years ago, but I, I forgot. How does the bidding process work? Because I always notice some of our local dealers are never privy to receiving these bids. So how does that work? Yes, Councilman Faircloth, we work off the state bid. Uh, the state bid is always the best price. We, we go through them because we get the best price and can... Uh, purchase the most vehicles with that bid. So our local dealers, are do they even attempt to bid? Are they a part of that no, process the, or the, no? Their, their dealership, not their specific dealership is not, but they're, such as Dodge and uh, Ford, they are. Uh, so they don't normally, I, I, I remember, recall maybe one time in the last 10 years that we may have actually gotten them from a local dealer but the state bids are usually very high number of vehicles where they need a large amount of property to, to filter all the, not just our police department, but the many police departments to go through that process. Okay, thank you. Jerry, go ahead. Yep. Jerry. Councilwoman, I can add some additional information to that. Historically, we used to go for requests for information to the local vendors, and, and no time could they meet, match those prices. Okay, makes sense. So that's good that you've at least communicated mm -hmm. with the local vendors. Absolutely. Okay, perfect. Anything else, Ms. Fairclough? No, that's it. Thank you, Mayor. Any other questions from Council on tab five? Any comments from the public? Tab five. Is there a motion on tab five? Is there a second? Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries tab six. Gang Alternative, Inc. is funded by the Children's Trust of Miami-Dade County to provide after-school youth violence prevention activities at the Curtis K. Ivy Jr. Police Athletic League facility located at 600 Southwest 14th Avenue PAL facility. The attached licensing agreement between the City of Homestead and Gang Alternative, Inc. allows for the use of the PAL facility to conduct youth-oriented activities, including the implementation of a violence prevention program. The funds will be paid to the City of Homestead by Gang Alternative, Inc., as outlined in the licensing agreement in the amount of $900 per month from September 1, 2017, retroactive through August 31st, 2018. The City will forward the funds to SOS, Inc., a federally registered nonprofit, 
SOS will in turn provide the funds to PAL to be utilized for after school and athletic programming, uniforms, field trips, equipment, and sport in competitions. Staff recommends mayor and council approve the attached resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a revocable licensing agreement with Gang Alternative Inc. Questions from council? Ms. Faircloth. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Just out of curiosity, how many students does this service and which stakeholder group? Is it elementary, middle, high? Good morning, or good morning. Good afternoon, Mayor Council. Um, approximately 80 students, and it's, 80? Uh, yes, and it's elementary age. Oh. And what type of activities are they engaged in? It's an after-school tutorial program, and they work on their homework and on uh, improving their skills, their academic levels. So this accommodates 80 children. How many actually participate? Is it 80? Uh, yes. Yes. We have about, well, actually, they bumped it up to 120, and uh, on a regular basis, you have between 80 to 100 kids that make it there weekly or daily. And where do they live? Uh, local areas. A lot of the kids next door, West Homestead uh, Middle, I mean, K through 8 Center. Um, the program is from 6 to 13 years old, are the kids that they service. Um, but some of the kids come from other area schools also. But a high concentration of them come from West Homestead K-8? Yes, they walk right across the, okay. the street to the pile. Do you track their, their academic progress and their attendance? Um, the staff there does, the GA staff tracks their academic process. They, they test, they do reading. Um, they use, utilize the computers that we have there for iReady and other activities that they do. How many computers you have? I'm sorry? How many computers do you have? We have 10 computers there. Huh. Does this funding, with this funding, can you purchase more computers? Uh, yes, we can possibly put, um, purchase more computers. Okay, because, yeah, you'll need more than that. Yeah. If, especially if they're doing already. And also, when does it, is it a start September 1? Is it the entire school year? It starts out August 1st. And also, um, to piggyback on your question as far as the testing and the grade level, because they're funded by the Children's Trust, the Children's Trust monitors their, their each child's level and ensures that they are progressing in order to obtain the funding. Do you communicate with the school? Do you communicate the data with the school? Or you're completely separate and there is no communication between the school? There, there is communication between Gang Alternative and the school. Okay. However, it is a, a totally separate program. Okay. And one more question. Does this... Is this facilitated over the summer as well? Yes, year-round. Year-round. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Roth. Thank you, Mayor. Is this new or is it replacing or is this something that continues every year? This is just a formality that we're redoing this again this year. We're, it, it, we're doing it again. It's a renewal. As long as they receive, Gang Alternative receives their funding from the Children's Trust, then it's a renewal. So how long have they actually been in place? This is the second year going on the third. And have they increased the enrollment from year one yes. to now? They started initially with 75, if I'm not mistaken. Went bumped up to about 80, 85, and now they're looking to 110 to 120. That's good. The more we can help, the better. Thank you, Marisol. Thank you, sir. Ms. Fairclaw. Uh, I have one more question. H how many staff members are part of this? Alternative, they have one, two, three, I think it's six staff members there. And the students are grouped according to their students developmental are levels? In their age groups. Age groups or yes. developmental levels? Age groups. Age groups? And then if the kids need extra assistance, they have a teacher that comes in and works with the kids um, in that area. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Any questions from the public? Any comments from the public? Is there a motion? Okay. Move and seconding. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mayor Thank you. Tab seven. Mayor, a new generator was installed at Wickcop Water Treatment Facility in 2016, which is much larger than the previous generator. The catwalk that it currently existed 
it was could not be salvaged in order to conduct maintenance checks oil changes on the generator there must be a catwalk installed per OSHA standard 1910.21b and in order for the water treatment operators to perform their job responsibilities at all times and especially in emergency situations in a safe manner staff recommends mayor council authorize city manager to award bid number 201817 catwalk and railings for Whitcup water treatment facility to condo electric motor, motor repair in the amount of thirty nine thousand nine hundred and eighty dollars this project is part of the city of homestead's capital improvement plan number 839 uh, for forty seven thousand dollars the bid solicitation was sent to 205 vendors and one responded Questions from council? Any questions, any comments from the public? Is there a motion? Is there a second? second. Moving and second. It all in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Tab eight. Staff recommends mayor and council approve the attached resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with Florida Spectrum Environmental Services, Inc. for a sampling and water testing in accordance with the Village of Wellington contract award number 02016DZ annual lab analysis. The request is in accordance with city code section 2-411.1A5 exemptions from competitive bidding allowing the city to utilize a bid or a proposal which has been secured by other government entities. The resolution will allow the city to piggyback on the current agree on the agreement between the Village of Wellington and Florida Spectrum Environmental Services Inc. And this is uh, their testing is required daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annually to keep the city's water waste treatment facilities within the requirements of the Department of Environmental Protection Agency permit. Uh, this uh, company has been performing these required services during the last eight and a half years, and the city has been satisfied with the services rendered. Questions from council? Any questions from the public? Comments from the public? Is there a motion? Tab eight. Is there a second? second. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Tab nine. Mayor, this came as a consequence of a meeting that uh, we had staff had last week with the new head of the CITT. And basically, they have a, uh, this initiative that they're trying to uh, support. And uh, they asked if we could bring this to you for consideration. Uh, this would give a little more flexibility on uh, the municipalities and the county utilizing the CITT funds. And uh, so this is here for your consideration because there's, uh, it's planning to come back on the April 19th and you're not meeting as a full, uh, uh, for a council meeting till after that. Uh, if, if you're supportive of this, we'd like to be able to manifest that support somehow uh, before this uh, hearing. The, um, this still has to go to an open vote though, right? It's, this is just a support letter and then it goes before the public for a vote to see if, ta if they'll tax themselves an additional half penny. Um, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Basically what this is, is, um, is an ordinance that was um, profited by Commissioner Moss. Uh, it's going to go before their board. And what it does, it doesn't add any additional taxes taken from people. It just, what it does is it opens up, it relaxes the, the requirements or the, um, the restrictions. Okay. Uh, that are placed on the monies. Uh, basically, this is going to be uh, instituted mostly to uh, focus on what they call first mile, last mile, uh, basically getting from the home to uh, a transit station or a bus station with a demand system in a place that you can call or with an app get somebody to pick you up at your home and take you there. And that would be covered by the PTP in some fashion. So that's what this is um, basically proposing. Okay. And they're just looking for support from the different municipalities. Uh, so when they take it up to their board, they have the support. So the, the county has to vote on it at the next meeting. But what the CITT people had asked is if in individual cities wanted to express their support for this, then they'd, they'd welcome that support, in essence, is what they've asked for. Well, you guys met with them, staff met with them. We met with them. Uh, they came because they have a new director. Uh, and they also wanted to see the site and just kind of have, kind of introduce their new director to the project that we're doing, which he's very supportive of as well. 
he's a, a, an economic development guy by, by trade, so coming into transportation is actually new to him, but he really understood what we're doing down here and was very supportive of that. And then when they mentioned this particular one, they were hoping that we'll get approved at the county. They asked if we'd at least take a shot and see if you're interested in supporting it. Mr. Burgess. Thank you, Mayor. To Mr. Brea, I get, or, or the manager, whomever, give me some specifics of exactly how it's going to help our local community as, as, because we're very limited in what we do as far as mass transit and all that down here now. And you're saying first mile, last mile. So can you explain the exact benefits that it would bring to our community? In essence, what this is proposing is basically providing another funding source for um, basically having a service, what they call an on-demand service, um, similar to the ones that you can use your app now to come pick you up at your house. But the idea is that they could only take you to a transit station or a bus stop. So let's say if you live half a mile away from a bus stop or a transit station and you would have to walk that distance in order to get there, this would provide funding so that uh, cities and the county in general could uh, have contracts with different uh, service providers that would be able to pick up those people at the homes. But Julio, and just to, to clarify, it's not necessarily to provide funding, but to allow that type of service from the existing funding. Correct, from the existing, okay. basically to so allow you. New, this is not a new pot of money and it's no. not a new tax. It basically says you, want, you weren't able to spend it on this type of thing before and this would allow you if you decided someday to, to do this it. This is something that the city would have to decide to do. Absolutely. Correct, correct, yes. And, and make their own contracts with their own vendors. Correct, right. correct, yes. It just, before, this we're, is we're not We're not allowed. even saying we're pre prepared to, or offering that or planning that. We're just saying that since they're going to be discussing whether this is something that each city would have a right to consider, they're in essence making the money more flexible so that someday should a city decide they wanted to offer that kind of services as they prioritize their PTP monies, this would be an additional option. And of course, as they are all discussing their smart plan and you know, all the transportation people are saying the same thing, which is, okay, well, we get how you, okay, you drive your car to the station and we get how you get on a rapid transit system to take you to Dadeland Station and wherever else you're going. But once you get to that station, that last mile, how are you going to get there? And so they're starting to think about what's the most effective way to do that. People are starting to think, is it Uber? Is it something else? Nobody really has kind of perfected that idea yet, but they're headed towards some concept like that. And, uh, and so what they want to do is kind of make, make sure that there is some flexibility in, uh, in this funding source that so, should somebody come up with a good idea, they at least would be able to use PTP monies for it. I, just, I read an article yesterday. I know that Charlotte, North Carolina <clears throat> is just starting a program like this, but they're using, they give some, I, I think they give you a $3 credit towards an Uber ride or something like that as you go to get on. And then anything over $3, you, you're, you, cover, yeah. you have to cover. So something like that. I, I think that Charlotte, North Carolina, they talking about uh, they're starting a new rail line and, and trying something up there. I, I, just had, I didn't read the entire article yesterday, but there was something to this effect taking place up there. So you know, I was just, just curious as to how it would be implemented if it's the county that would be implementing it. Uh, I, I couldn't support it. <laughs> if it's in control of it, then I can support it. But if it's another county project coming down here, uh, I'm not in support of it. If, if this opens up the city's possibility to to enhance its um, it gives you more flexibility to yeah. spend your, your and would, would these people be allowed to take uh, you said to a bus stop or a or a central area would this include the trolley system that is yes, now in place? Yes, absolutely, it will include the trolley system as well. Okay. So, or even if you know, once we build, but I mean, our, trolley our, stops would count as a as a transit stop. Yes, absolutely, right. it does. Uh, and, and again, this is just allowing the possibility for the monies to be used for these type of services. It doesn't have any restrictions right. as to who could use them or not. You know, right. it's just uh, so. Yeah, cities could 
venture into their own contracts, just like we do now with our trolleys. They're separate completely from the county. So it, and, that and wouldn't impact And according anything. to the previous executive director of the CITT, cities had kind of initiated this, wanting some flexibility uh, to, to initiate some of these programs. So it appears as if this was driven by the cities. Uh, but as long as we're the ones that are going to control what's going to happen down here, then I can support it. Like I said, if it's if it's the county telling us more stuff of what to do with their failing transit system, then I can't support it. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Mr. Maldonado. Well, just kidding. Uh, listen, I, I think that's I think it's uh, they're heading in the right direction. I I remember with uh, working with uh, Julio in regards to trying to get our trolley to go a little bit down off of 137th because our mm -hmm. issue was over at the uh, Waterstone District is that you know, as they, as you head north on 137th, getting to that corner of uh, Waterstone, it's a far hike, you know, to get down to um, uh, 312th Street to one to our trolley system. So, I think this is something that that potentially would be good for us for the last mile. I guess my question, uh, or do we have any information in regards to what are their plans that they're projecting? Any discussion? Any information? It's just kind of preliminary, you know, get, putting some feelings out there. But yeah, and if you do get this, this is just the first step, uh, basically right. just uh, opening up that door to allow the monies to be used for that okay. type of service. Yeah. If there's any information that you see in regards to that, please uh, forward that to us so we can at least look at what they're considering or thinking about. Thank you. And, and one thing we, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, they can feed all they want to into the transit system that doesn't work right now. Because, you know, that's what we don't have is a, is a true transit system that works up and down the, what is the, what they call now the busway. Um, we should probably, you know, petition. I know they just bought some more of those new articulating, newer articulating buses. And I think we should position ourselves for some one of those to enhance, you know, the, the ability. Because I know a lot of these buses, when they leave in the mornings, are full. You know, they fill up in Florida City by they get to by the time they get to the next stop, there's no nowhere, nowhere for anybody to get on. So, you know, if we want to, as a council or as a, you as manager, contact you know the uh, Miami-Dade County Mayor and say, look, you know, you got 200 and some odd buses, send one south, at least in the interim while they're trying to figure out, you know, what they're going to do with this transit way. It's getting closer. Well, they keep moving the timeline on the study to come in. I know it was supposed to be in this summer. They moved it till. I think next summer before they finish the, you know, the 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 environmental and all the other issues that they've got to deal with. But it just moves the ball that much farther for us, and it leaves us out on on the end of the short stick for another year. But I am feeling and seeing a, a coalescing of of uh, leadership to the south that's that will shut off any discussion about anything but heavy rail. It's beginning to move a little bit, um, which is which is a good thing because. If, if we sit here as a community and say we're only going to take this, we did that before and we got nothing. And we need to, you know, that's what we've been trying to talk as a, to the other communities. Say, look, you can advocate for only thing that you want now and you will end up with nothing. And, and it, if whatever we get has got to go to Florida City. So you can't hold out for something that doesn't include Homestead and Florida City. And um, it's beginning to kind of sink in a little bit that's at the municipal level county level is a whole nother another battle but um you know i'm, I'm kind of with john if this gives us some flexibility that first and last mile is all well and good but we need that 20 miles in the middle you know so um this is a good start but i think we need to coalesce around i mean i think mr manager let's see if we can get one of those additional buses to come down to us at least homestead florida city we all call them tomorrow. Position ourselves for that and see if that l does some relief. But um, it's still a long debate. It's still a long debate. But I'm seeing a chink in the armor of some of the other hold the ground, you know, uh, type of players. They're seeing that, you know, to hold out for rail or something that's different from a, a, a transit system on rubber tires could be 10 or 15 years down the road. We did get a memo from one of the city managers in one of the five cities who it looks like at the request of one of their electeds is trying to organize a trip to see BRT. And when they said they were going to Mexico City, I suggested that they do the, the route we did, which was San Bernardino and Portland, 
and I haven't heard back yet, but the fact that they're, they're at least willing to start looking at BRT, that, that in and of itself is a, is a big move off their position, I think. Well, it is. I, 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 that's what I'm saying. I think what you're, what you're seeing is people realizing the inevitable. If you hold out for all in every option, there is a no build option. They're, they're studying all of them at the end of the day. If, if no bill, if they can't get a consensus from the community what they want, they will do nothing. We did that before. So um, let's see if we can get a bus, Julio, an additional uh, tr uh, rapid transit bus, not just another bus bus, yeah, but a rapid transit bus. bus and see if that can give us some relief and get us headed in the right direction. But anyway. And one other thing about the rail is if there was ever any doubt about the consultant's estimates, which there were three reports that estimated that the, it would cost somewhere around $100 million a mile to do the light rail, and the bids were opened up for the rail project in Fort Lauderdale for a three-mile loop, and that was $100 million a mile. So those are real numbers. Those are the freshest numbers anybody has. So. The idea that you can do light rail from here to Dadeland Station for less than $2 billion, you know, it's, it's really, the facts don't bear out anything other than what, what we've been told all along. And the BRT is estimated to be about $600 million. And the county mayor said that they have the funding for it. And the BRT can go up and be up and running in three to five years as opposed to the light rail. Well, the, the rail project in Fort Lauderdale started in 2006, and, uh, and they're still not, they just got the bids. So the facts are pretty, and it's fresh information, and if that doesn't open up anybody's eyes, you know, we can study this thing for another 20 years, it's going to be the same thing. If we, get some, if we get something to the people now, those who choose to get out of their car just need to have an option. Right now, you don't have an option. And that's why I say start out with the one more one more rapid transit bus. We still can kind of coalesce around this this discussion that's going on. And it seems like, like you said, it seems like the discussion is coming more to our thinking of let's do something in our lifetime. Let's get something that works, you know, sooner rather than later. And 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 be very careful not to do not to have the no build again. You know. So, uh, sorry, I got off on a tangent there. Um, Any other discussion on tab nine? So Any, then if we send a letter, because I, you know, I guess you can, they can't vote on anything tonight, but is there any way to manifest, assuming this support for this, how, how do we do it uh, so that it gets there before the, uh, the hearing? Matt. Well, with your turn. Hold on. Sorry. You can turn it on. Go ahead. If there's a consensus, then uh, staff can put together a letter of support from the city and forward it on to the CITT, and they can include it in their package when they present it to the county for its consideration. Okay, let me get Mr. Roth. Mr. Roth? Yeah, I agree with almost everything I'm hearing here, but can, can, can somebody tell me what or how the city is going to benefit from this monetarily? What will it, it, it actually do for us? It would have no impact on the amount of funding that you receive. All it would do is someday, if, assuming there's some idea that involves a, uh, a last mile concept, then the city would be able to utilize some of its PTP funds to, to fund some sort of a program like that. Currently, it's, uh, the, the current law is very limited as to what you could do. So it just gives the, the city council more control over that PTP money. And, uh, and so if they pass this, you could do nothing. It doesn't impact your funds one way or the other. But if someday there's some Uber, Uber concept that would help get you to uh, your last mile destination, that uh, you'd, you'd be able to utilize some of these funds. But of course, those funding priorities, it's not like the funds are just sitting there waiting to be used. You, we're, right now, we're using the funds for other things, but you'd, you'd be thinking in terms of what's a more important priority, one thing or the other. So for example, the bulk of your PTP funds will be used to pay off the parking garage, the transit center. So we know we're going to have a transit center garage. We know that hopefully one day we'll have the 20 miles that gets us from here to Dadeland Station, which we hope and expect will get us from, instead of one hour and 15 minute commute to maybe 40, 45 minutes, what we don't know is how to get people from wherever they're, from the transit garage to wherever else they're going. And that's something 
other cities will likely figure out before we do, because it, if it takes three to five years to settle this whole BRT thing or light rail, that's the best case scenario. Yeah, that would be uh, a, a major shame if it takes another five years to figure that transportation problem out. But don't we almost all we already do the last mile thing with our with our trolleys? No. I mean, no. we all, I mean, this this would pick somebody up from like a bus stop and take them to their house, potentially, or it could take somebody from the transit center to could be take them to their job. It could take it. It really what what nobody seems to grasp here is how to take. Okay, I'm now at Dayland Station, and my job is a mile away. How do I get there? Am I going to walk the mile? So depends on some idea. That it could be some sort of autonomous vehicles. You know, right now everybody's talking about this whole idea of autonomous vehicles, how quickly that's going to sort itself out. There's uh, one thing CIT said, there's some sort of a pod that's taken people. They gave us some information that we're going to look at. It's uh, some sort of a pod that goes a mile or two miles. So you could end up funding one of those. Uh, I really don't know. I don't think anybody's really come up with the best solution yet. But once, once you're able to walk out of your house and get to your job without any need for a lot of walking and without a lot of need for a big expense, and a lot of flexibility in terms of regularity when you don't have to do a whole lot of waiting. How they put all the pieces together in an efficient way where then they figure a lot more people will take mass transit. But because when you have a scenario, it's easier in Manhattan, you take the subway and you get, you, you pop out of the, 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 the steps and there is your job right there in places where there's suburban sprawl and you still want a transit system that's practical, those last couple of miles really become the big issue. Because even if you drop me right here at City Hall, if my job is two miles away, you know, that mass transit may not be a great option for me. Well, if it, if it means they're going to give us more control over the money that they already give us, I'm okay with that. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. And it sounds awfully complicated to figure all this stuff out that they're going to try to do. And if we come up with a, uh, a program like that, I think we're much more prepared to execute within our city. So if we have control over the dollars that they're already giving us or a little bit more control, then um, I'm, I'm okay with that part. Yeah, and, and the likelihood is cities were more likely to come up with uh, some sort of a, so, uh, a pilot program before the counties do. And even things like cities where Fort Lauderdale, you draw, you get, you need to get to the airport or you get to the airport and the hotels to the beaches where you're going to stay as a tourist for a week. You don't want to rent a car. How do you get, how do you get to your hotel? So, Miami Beach is looking at the same questions and how do you get people uh, to, and the tourists are more likely to use their rapid transit systems and the mass transit systems. They like doing it, but there's still not a whole lot of solutions right but, now. But, but aren't those people already getting to those destinations now? Well, the question is how do you, so, some of them are renting cars, some of them are taking Ubers, they're paying their own money. The question is, is there, you know, is there a more efficient way to do that? And I, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, there's only so much we can uh, know. Uh, Las Vegas is testing out some autonomous vehicles. Whether those will work out for them or not, as you know from the, the strip there, there's a, it's a long strip, and how do you get people, other than walking, how do you get them from one end to the other? And they have the monorail in the back, but they're always looking for some easier solution to move people around. Uh, I was hoping this was going to give us more money to control on our own, but I guess not. Can we request that instead of, you know, anything else? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we could always yeah. use more. 
I mean, the, the, the county's big burden right now is when they sold this sales tax, this, they made promises and they hadn't yeah, delivered on their promises. And that's, so that's the sad part. All that's right, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, sir. So you have direction. Anybody, anybody opposed to letting the manager sign this and send it forward? Okay. So we're, <laughs> we're on tab 10. Let's go on to something easier, yeah, medical yeah, marijuana. Yeah, yeah. Hang on, give up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor and Council, yes, this item is um, a discussion item this evening. It's primarily to, um, to get um, legislative policy direction from you all as to uh, what you all would like to do or how you would like to address and regulate medical marijuana. And I'll give a, a brief summary, um, which concludes in uh, three options available for the council for consideration this evening to give us policy direction on where you'd like to go. The memo is, is very detailed. I won't get into all of that unless you have specific questions. I'll be happy to answer those. But uh, last February, February 2017, you all adopted a moratorium ordinance on medical marijuana facilities, uh, and this was um, subsequent to the 2016 constitutional amendment um, that was approved by Florida voters um, providing for and allowing for medical marijuana. Um, and at the time, the legislature was in session and they were floating around various competing bills. And because we as a city didn't have any idea where this was going, felt best to adopt a moratorium to put things on hold so that we not accept any applications, we not um, do anything with respect to medical marijuana facilities until such time as legislation was adopted and we had some sense or direction as to where the state uh, was going and what they were doing with respect to medical marijuana. So we adopted that moratorium in February of 2017. February of 2018, uh, the moratorium ended. Um, so we're now at a point where we have to make a determination and decision on what we're going to do. The legislation that was approved in 2017 by the Florida legislature basically dictates that medical marijuana treatment centers, and they group them all together as treatment centers, I like to call it the cradle to grave. It covers cultivation or grow facilities, manufacture facilities, dispensaries or dispensing facilities, and delivery. And essentially what the legislature uh, did was they preempted local governments from taking any action or having any jurisdiction over regulating the cultivation or grow facilities, the manufacture facilities, and the dispense, the, the, the delivery services. And they basically left for local governments the ability to regulate the dispensaries. But there's a caveat. So it's not just you can do whatever you want with respect to dispensaries. The law said basically that if you want to allow for dispensaries in your local government, then you have to treat them on the level playing field in the same as you would any other pharmacy. So just as you would deal with a CVS or a Walgreens, you would have to allow for a dispensary. So anywhere you would allow for a pharmacy, you would have to allow for a dispensary. Um, you couldn't treat a dispensary any differently zoning-wise or fee-wise or regulate them any more uh, than you would a pharmacy. So basically it creates this all or nothing decision for you all, um, whether or not you want to say no to dispensaries, whether or not you want to allow for dispensaries, and then there's a third option on the table, and that is whether or not you want to just say no to everything. And exercising that right is, uh, would be based on a federal preemption argument, which it is not very clear whether or not that would be a successful argument. Um, so those are three options for your consideration. If you choose to say no to dispensaries, that still allows for cultivation, manufacture, and delivery in the city. You all can't regulate that. It's totally preempted to the state. If you say no to dispensaries, I'm sorry, that was no to, yes to dispensaries. If you say no to dispensaries, um, 
uh, I'm confused. I'm sorry. Yes, by the opposite of that. Yeah. So if you allow for dispensaries, <laughs> if you allow for the dispensaries, the most that you would be able to regulate pursuant to the law is there is a there's a there, there's a prohibition on 500 feet away from schools that uh, you as a council would have to would have to consider pursuant to a public hearing if in fact you wanted to allow a, a, a dispensary to go beyond that limitation. But that's the most you would be able to do. It would have to be on equal footing. So anywhere in the city you would allow for a retail commercial pharmacy, you would have to open the door and allow for a dispensary. And then again, the third option, if you choose, would be to say no to everything, which would include the cultivation, the grow facilities, the manufacture facilities, um, and, and, and as I noted in the memo in detail, um, that's pretty unclear. I mean, that's an argument that I don't know of any municipality in Florida that's taken that position. It's a pretty aggressive position. I call it the nuclear position. Um, and what may or may not result from that is unclear whether or not we would survive that challenge. So I'm happy to get into more detail or specifics with anything, um, but I'll, I'll answer any questions that you have. Mr. Burgess. Thank you. No, I just wanted to put my opinion out there uh, since we're looking for them tonight, is that <clears throat> I don't think we should allow dispensaries. Um, obviously, I, I don't think the nuclear, as James called it, quote unquote, solution is the best. I believe that opens us up to litigation, whether somebody wants to build here or not. I think they're just going to challenge us. Um, and then we could really end up in a bad way if the courts come down on us. Um, the one thing that, that James, maybe you did mention or not, was that a lot of these grow houses, or not grow, they're not a grow house, excuse me. <laughs> grow farms or, or cultivation uh, businesses are, are kind of being nervous right now because of the stance that the federal government has taken. That, um, you know, it, it is still a federal offense to do it, so therefore they could come in and, and swipe any property they've done. So these people are reluctant to make the, the large investment that it takes. So my position is that we don't allow dispensaries, we don't go nuclear, but we uh, uh, just go through with, with the um, cultivation areas being allowed, which I think are very limited within the city anyway as to where they could go, um, you know, as far as space and, and what there is available for them to come in here at. So that would be my opinion. Does it, let me ask you a question. Does anybody have a contrary position to that? Because, you know, I, I think that Vice, Vice Mayor, I'm no, sorry. No, I don't have a contrary. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you know, we, we can we can talk all night about this, but I, I think that of the three choices, I kind of have to agree with the thoughts, and you probably have had some conversation with all of us. And, and you know, if we, can just, if, if we can agree that that, I don't think any of us in the previous discussion wanted any dispensaries in town, and we certainly don't want one in every Walgreens. As I would say, I'm speaking for you guys like I like I can, but well, with no regulation, you can't. Right, without being able to say no, if we say yes, to, it w they'll be everywhere, and that's one of the things that I think the council didn't want in the first discussion was a dispensary on every corner, because all of us that got to see it in California, kind of a a mess, kind of a real mess. Um, so we can we can talk all night. My position is is very same that the very same as John's, uh, uh, Mr. Burgess, that you know. There is, there was a public vote, and and the public did vote that they wanted to have a medical marijuana component in Florida. Let the let the feds challenge that, but I mean we're not, they're not knocking the doors down since the federal government wrote this letter that says um, they they deem this illegal still. So, and and I, and I would add to that is that if you all decide that you don't want dispensaries. Um, it doesn't preclude you from changing your mind later. The Florida legislature could take this up, this issue up again and narrow the window um, to give local governments some ability to regulate more than just wide open as it, as it stands now. And it also doesn't prohibit someone from receiving medical care or medicine, medical marijuana, because delivery is still allowed to any patient in the city. So by saying no to dispensaries, um, you know, that option is still available for anyone in the city. Vice Mayor. No, you, I, I concur with what the, the direction it seems like the council is going, so unless there's further debate, I'm, I'll, I'll stay quiet for now. Is, is anybody opposed to the option that, that uh, Mr. Burgess brought up? Everybody okay with that? Mr. Manager, you clear? Everybody's good with? Clear. Grow. Grow only. 
So, so what, what, what I'll do is because I need to memorialize that in the, in the, in the code. So um, forthcoming, I'll be bringing, we'll be bringing forth a code amendment that basically stipulates no dispensaries. I won't be growing any. <laughs> Put that on the record, sir. No, no. no I, think it's a, I think it's a good middle of the road compromise. I think, it's, it's a, I think we'll have a good outcome based on that. So. Sorry. Anything else from council? Any other any other questions from manager? Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Can, uh, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Attorney, can I? Mr. Burgess, cut you off. If I could just announce a couple of quick executive sessions. Quick, quickly, sure. Uh, Hannity City of Homestead, 11th Circuit, case number 16330028. DSV Homestead, 11th Circuit, case number 14023939. Odage Homestead. 11th Circuit case number 15026141, Para v. City of Homestead, case number 14011866. And finally, Deegan v. Homestead, uh, Southern District, case number 16CV22820. Thank you. Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? Yes. Move, second, and all in favor? Meeting over. Good night. Good night.